got some inverse functions. Now it says here, given that the function of x equals 3x plus 4, work out an expression for f minus 1x, which means the inverse function. Okay, so we're going to have a look at doing this. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, and we'll start with this question. So the inverse function of x just means essentially what is the opposite or the reverse of this function. Now the function at the moment, 3x plus 4, just means that whatever number you put in, it gets multiplied by 3 and then you add 4. And if we think logically, the reverse of that would be taking away 4 and dividing by 3. But we just have a look at a process for actually working out a method for how we could actually go about writing this expression out for this inverse function. Now it's just personal precedent. There are lots of ways of doing this. This is just the way that I like to do it. Now instead of writing the function of x equals 3x plus 4, I like to just write y equals 3x plus 4. So I write y equals 3x plus 4, and now what I do is I rearrange it to make x the subject. So if I want to make x the subject, first thing that I do is I'm going to have to take away 4 here. Obviously it's just rearranging equations, so you can always have a look at my video on rearranging equations. But minus 4 from both sides would leave you y minus 4 equals 3x. And then to get x as the subject we would divide by 3, and we'd get y minus 4 all over 3 equals x. Now obviously the y I only put in place there just to help me rearrange it. Obviously that this isn't a very nice piece to rearrange f of x, okay, so it's just easier just to replace it with a letter. And what we're going to do here now is just swap the x and y over to put the x back in. And that would leave us with x minus 4 over 3 rather than y minus 4 over 3. And that equals the inverse function of x. Okay, I think back to the logical idea there. We said x would help you to reverse times in by 3 and adding 4. You would take away 4 and divide by 3. And that's what's shown there in the inverse function. x take away 4 and then divide by 3. And that is our inverse function. Okay, so all we're going to do is write y equals instead of f of x, make x a subject, and then swap x and y. So three little steps there with some rearranging. Let's have a look at another one. Okay, so in this question I've got g of x, okay? So it's exactly the same as f of x, it's just a different function with a different letter. So sometimes you might have this, okay, but don't let that throw you, it's just it's just a different letter for the function. So given that g of x equals x squared minus 9, work out an expression for the inverse function of g. So same again, I'm going to replace g of x with y. So y equals x squared minus 9. And let's just make x the subject. So add 9 to both sides, we get y plus 9 equals x squared. And then to get x as a subject, we're going to have to remove the square, so we're going to have to square root both sides, and we get the square root of y plus 9 equaling x. And then to finish it off, obviously just swap the x and y again, so you get the square root of x plus 9 rather than y plus 9, and that is equal to the inverse function of g. Okay, so just write that out, equals the inverse function of g. There we go, the square root of x plus 9. One more question before you have a go. OK, so we've got some fractions involved in this question as well. But we're going to treat it in exactly the same way. So I'm just going to write y equals 3x plus 2 over 4. I'm going to rearrange it to make x the subject. So first things first, we're going to have to get rid of this divide by 4 on the bottom. So let's times that over. So times in both sides by 4 would give us 4y equals 3x plus 2. Subtract 2 from both sides. So 4y minus 2 equals 3x, and then divide both sides by 3, so it'd be 4y minus 2 all over 3 equals x. And then again, finishing that off, just swap the x and y over, so rather than it being 4y, it'd be 4x minus 2 all over 3, and that equals the inverse function of f. Okay, so Swap the f of x or g of x for y equals, rearrange it to make x a subject, and then just swap your x's and y's back over and you'll get your inverse function. Here's some for you to have a go at. So have a go at these two, pause the video there, we'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so for the first one, swap that for y equals, so y equals 5x minus 2. Okay, rearrange it, so we get y plus 2 equals 5x, divide by 5, y plus 2 over 5 equals x, and then swap your x and y, so x plus 2 over 5 equals the inverse function of f, which I'm going to put at the start this time, so f minus 1 of x, the inverse function, equals x plus 2 divided by 5, and there's our final answer. Okay, on to the next one. So, write it as y equals, so y equals x squared 
plus one over three. Just as a side note, you could actually just swap the X and Y here and make Y the subject again, but I'm just gonna stick with the same method that I always use here. So times both sides by three, we get three Y equals X squared plus one. Take away the one from both sides, so three Y minus one equals X squared, and then square rooting both sides would leave us with the square root of three Y minus one equaling x and then finish that off swap your x and y so we have 3x minus 1 under the square root and that equals the inverse function of f right there we go and there's inverse functions and there's our second one all right let's have a look at something else okay so this question says given that f of x equals 2 brackets x plus 2 work out the value of f minus 1 with a 10 in there. So that f minus 1 still means the inverse function, but with a 10 in there means it's going to want us to do something with that in a second. We'll talk about that once we get the inverse function. But first things first, we can see this inverse f, so let's find an expression for the inverse of f. Now straight away we've got some brackets there, so we need to expand these brackets. So let's expand that straight away when we write y equals. So y equals 2 times x, which is 2x, and 2 times 2, which is 4, so plus 4. And let's find the inverse function. So subtract 4 from both sides, y minus 4 equals 2x. Divide by 2, we get y minus 4 over 2 equals x. And let's write our inverse function. So f minus 1 of x equals x minus 4 rather than y minus 4 over 2. Now whenever you're given a number in the brackets here, it just means it wants you to replace x with the number. That's why it says work out the value. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to sub in x equals 10 into my little expression here. So I've got x minus 4 over 2, and that's going to become 10 minus 4 over 2. 10 minus 4 equals 6, so it's 6 over 2, which gives me a value of 3. Okay, so find the inverse function and then sub that number in. There is another process to actually go about solving this, but I think it's a good process just to write out the inverse function and then sub it in because there's two elements of the maths going on there rather than applying a little trick here. Okay, so let's have a look at one more before we have a go. Okay, so given that f of x is 2x plus 5 over 3, work out the inverse function of f when we put 7 in. So don't forget, once we get the inverse function, we're going to sub in x equals 7. Okay, but let's actually find the inverse function first. So y equals 2x plus 5 over 3, and let's rearrange that. So 3y times in both sides by 3 equals 2x plus 5. Subtract 5 from both sides, 3y minus 5 equals 2x, and then divide by 2, 3y minus 5 all over 2 equals x. And let's rewrite that out. So the inverse function of f equals 3x minus 5 over 2. Okay, so subbing in x equals 7, let's put that in. What do we get? We get 3 times 7, I'm going to write it all in, 3 lots of 7, minus 5, over 2. 3 times 7 is 21, so we have 21 minus 5, over 2. 21 take away 5 is 16, so we have 16 over 2, and 16 divided by 2 equals 8. So you might be able to do some of those steps in your head there, but just showing you all the process of subbing that in and getting to that final answer. Okay, so here's some for you to have a go at. Okay, so there's two questions. Have a go at both of these. Pause the video there. We'll go over the answer in a sec. Okay, so for the first one, y equals, and let's expand this bracket. So 3 times 2x is 6x. 3 times 1 equals 3, so plus 3. Rearranging that, we get y minus 3. I'm going to do it in two step, one step over 6 equals x, and let's write that function out. So f minus one of x equals x minus three over six. And now let's sub that number in, so x equals 15. So what do we get? We get 15 minus three over six. 15 take away three is 12, so it's 12 over six, which equals two. And there's our final answer, two. And on to the next one. Let's write this out, so y equals 3x plus 4 over 4, and let's rearrange this. So we get 4y when we times by 4, then we're going to take away 4, and then we divide by 3, and that equals x. Okay, so I've obviously done that in a very short step there, but f minus 1 of x equals 4x minus 4 over 3, 
And then the number it wants us to sub in there is seven. So if we sub seven in, let's see what we get. We get four lots of seven, which is 28. So we get 28 minus four over three. 28 take away four is 24. So we have 24 over three. And 24 divided by three is eight. So the value is eight. Okay, right, so that's inverse functions, finding inverse functions and then also substituting into functions and what that number means inside the bracket there if it's not an x. Okay, so there's lots of maths going on there, uh, but if you found that useful, if you found that helpful, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.